Hello everyone. Welcome in this session on one of very important topic of science at secondary level that is called electromagnetism. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor for the course and I am going to talk about different concepts, facts and principles related to electromagnetism which you need to explain to your students in the class. For understanding of those concepts, you need to help them that how they can understand these concepts effectively in the class. So when we talk about electromagnetism, how can we start? How can we engage our learners? I am suggesting a very interesting activity to you. Give one cell a torch cell, one copper wire, a bulb, a switch, and a magnet to your students and ask to make a circuit because they have already studied about the electric current and electric circuit in the previous classes. You ask them to make a circuit by using cell bulb switch and connecting it with the copper wire. Now, ask them to switch on when the switch will be on, they will observe that bulb illuminates. It means that electricity is passing through the wire. Now ask them to switch off and bring the magnet near to the copper wire and ask them to observe what is happening. They will say that copper wire is not being attracted towards the magnet because magnet is not attracting the copper wire. Copper is not having the magnetic char characteristic. Right. You just ask them to switch on. And again observe the same thing. They will be surprised to see that buyer is feeling attraction towards the magnet. You ask them again to switch it off, you, to repeat it 3-4 times. And then you ask your learners why is it happening. In science this why is very important for any observation. Similarly, if you are in a laboratory with essential equipment, you can divide your class into small groups. You provide the cell, key, emitter, variable, register and copper wire to each group and ask them to construct a circuit and keep the compass needle beneath the copper wire. Help them to keep the copper wire basically straight along north-south direction and compass needle beneath it that there they need your intervention. And let the learners observe the deflections in the compass needle. They will observe that when current is flowing through the conductor, the compass needle get deflected and change the direction when the current direction change means when you invert the cell the positive become negative and negative become positive the deflection in the compass needle is also changed what they can draw from these experiences whether a simple cell experiment or the experiment in the laboratory when they will observe they will share their experiences their experiments then you ask them to think the reason why there is an attraction in the wire in first case and deflection in the compound needle in the second case. Here you can introduce the concept of magnetic effect of electric current. So what do we mean by magnetic effect of electric current? When a current flows through any conductor, the magnetic field is developed around it and the direction of the magnetic field depend on the direction of the current. This effect is known as magnetic effect of electric current which was first discovered by Hans Christian Oersted and we basically use Oersted as a unit to measure the magnetic field. All the electric motors whether they are in any equipment whether it is a washing machine, whether it is a fridge, whether it is electricity generator all electric motors work based on the principle of magnetic effect of current. So when you introduce the concept of magnetic effect of current, the question may be that up to where this magnetic effect can be felt. That is basically known as magnetic field. So a student may not know what magnetic field is. So what I suggest here the same experiment has been suggested in the textbook of science also in NCRT textbook. 
that give a perfume spray to a learner and ask him or her to apply it somewhere and let him stand in the center of the class after applying the perfume and ask the other learners to roam around in the room and try to find out or try to reach at the boundary up to where they are feeling the smell of the perfume. Ask them to mark and identify that area up to where they feel the smell of the perfume. That area is considered as field area of that perfume. Similarly, the area up to where the magnetic effect is being felt is called magnetic field of that magnet. So the area around the magnet where its presence is felt is called magnetic field of that magnet and it can be defined as the space around the magnet in which magnetic force is exerted or magnetic field is the space around the magnet in which the force of attraction or repulsion can be detected. If there is a magnetic field then you need to introduce a very interesting concept called magnetic field lines. Because magnetic field around a magnet is represented by drawing magnetic field lines. These are lines basically the lines of the forces or the line of force which can be drawn around a magnet. And these are imaginary lines. These are imaginary lines. This concept of magnetic field lines was basically introduced by Faraday. And he explained that magnetic field at a point is the force experienced by a hypothetical unit north pole place at that point and the direction of the force give the direction of the field and magnetic field is a vector quality vector quality means that magnetic field has its value magnitude as well as its direction the direction of the magnetic field is taken by the convention that the magnetic field lines emerges from north pole and merge to the south pole because students know what magnet is what north pole south pole are they also know that north pole uh, attracts south pole but north pole repels north pole similarly south pole attracts north pole but south pole repels south pole so these things these are basic things they have studied at the elementary level the strength of the field can also be observed from the closeness of the magnetic field lines there is a very famous experiment which you will find in almost all the textbooks that you can ask your learners to keep the bar magnet at the center of a white sheet of a paper, fix it over a board. Then you spread some iron fillings around it and you gently shake the board. Learners will observe that the iron fillings are arranged in a pattern like you can see in the picture. That pattern or these lines along which the iron fillings are arranged are representing magnetic field lines and they can also observe that the density of the magnetic field lines is very much near to the poles not as much at the farther places. But it does not mean that magnetic field lines or magnetic field is being generated only by a bar magnet. Any kind of magnet can generate its own magnetic field and you can draw the magnetic field lines for that. There is another experiment where you can provide a bar magnet and a compass needle to the learners. This also has been given in the NCRT textbook. And you ask them to place the bar magnet on a sheet of paper and place the compass needle near to the north pole. They will mark the north pole and the south pole. Then you keep changing the position of the needle such that the south pole marked earlier should be the direction of the north pole of the compass needle. So in this way you can mark the positions and you can find the area under which that magnetic field is working. What are the common properties of magnetic field lines? If you see the images or the experiment through which you can develop some magnetic field lines, these are basically directed from north pole to south pole outside the magnet. But inside the magnet, these are from south pole to north pole. A magnetic field line is a closed continuous curve and the magnetic field lines are crowded near to the poles where the field is very strong and far from the magnet where the field is weak. Another very important characteristic is that magnetic field lines never intersect each other because if it will happen, it means that there should be two directions of the magnetic field. It is impossible. That's why there is not a single possibility where two magnetic field lines can intersect with each other. Now, 
learners have already seen that there is a current carrying conductors produce magnetic field because we when we were discussing about the concept of magnetism or the magnetic effect of electric current we have shown them that when current is passing through a conductor a copper wire magnetic field is being generated we have also introduced that these have directions and magnitude because there are many current carrying conductor like a straight conductor circular loop solenoids so your student may ask a question that whether all current carrying conductors behave in same way whether the magnetic field and magnetic field lines are similar for each kind of current carrying conductor your answer should be you observe yourself you give them the opportunity to explore that is the pattern of the magnetic field produced depend upon the shape of the conductor or not for this what you need to do you need to give them different kind of conductors either you can do a group activity like one conduct one group can be given straight conductor one group can be given circular conductor one group can be given the solenoid conductor or if you have more conductors then divide it in three four groups and first give all the straight conductors then the other conductors what you need to provide them you need to provide them a resistance resistor which is called a cell of 12 volt or not more than that a cardboard a thick copper wire and a meter the compass needle and key first they will construct the circuit where they will place the variable resistance ammeter cells key and the wire and you ask them to put the cardboard horizontally and the thick copper wire normal to the cardboard means 90 degree of tack you give them some iron fillings which they can spread here and there on the board and then you keep the resistor at a particular point and pass current through it and at the same time gently tap on the cardboard slowly you will observe and your learners will observe that iron fillings are being collected into circular path so they will observe that the iron filling will align themselves in the concentric circles as you can see in the figure to find out the direction of the magnetic field at a point say p you can place the compass needle at that point the direction of the north pole of the compass needle will give the direction of the magnetic field at that point ask them to repeat the activity by reversing the current direction or by changing the current increasing the resistance all permutations and combinations they should do and they should observe what is happening in the compass needle you also ask them to increase the current flow and record their observations so with this whole activity what you can conclude you can conclude that when current flows through a straight conductor the strength of the magnetic field created is directly proportional to the current the direction of the magnetic field depend upon the direction of the current and strength of magnetic field near conductor is high and reduce at the further points to explain it there are two rules one is called right hand thumb rule suppose this is a pen or a rod and if a student hold it like this then this pen is the direction of the current upside this is the direction of the current i it is represented by the thumb so if thumb is representing the direction of the current the fingers around the coil they are showing the direction of the magnetic field the curled fingers you can see it in the image also similarly there is another rule called maxwell cork screw rule the rule is saying that if a straight a screw is being rotated by the right handed person so you rotate like this screw so the direction of the screw means it is going down is the direction of the current and the direction in which you are moving the screw that is the direction of the magnetic field so these two examples can be used to explain the direction and the relationship between the direction of the current and direction of the magnetic field these two are very very famous rules and all students should understand and know it then we are talking about the magnetic field due to current 
through a circular loop. So if current is passing through a circular loop, what will happen? The magnetic field around a circular loop can be demonstrated by constructing a circuit in which you put the key, you put the cell and you attach a circular loop with the buyer. You put a cardboard in between. Like here you can see in the image that a copper circular loop is created and it is connected with the cell and key. Let learners observe the pattern of the iron filling formed when the current is flow through the circuit. The pattern of iron filling form will represent the magnetic field lines across the circular loop. And you can see in the picture also that with this you can explain that every point of the circular loop generate magnetic field and its strength is maximum near the circular loop. The strength of magnetic field reduces at distance increases from the circular loop and the arc of the circle means the magnetic field lines at the center of the loop appears as a straight lines. Similarly, if you want to introduce that how magnetic field is being generated when a current is passing through a solenoid, many of your students may know solenoid, few of may, may not be aware about what solenoid is. So solenoid is basically a coil of many circular turns around a long straight core. So to find out the magnetic field due to a current carrying solenoid, you need to make the connections, let you connect the solenoid with the cell, with the key and put a compass below the solenoid. So what you can explain? Here you can explain that magnetic field inside the solenoid are in the form of parallel straight lines. Thus magnetic field inside is same at all the points inside the solenoid. Or you can say that cell, the field is uniform inside the solenoid. The magnetic field lines across a solenoid and bar magnet looks same. The solenoid behaves like a bar magnet having the north pole and the south pole. When we place any current carrying conductor in the magnetic field, the current carrying conductor experiences a force. What is the relationship of that force, the magnetic field and the current in that current carrying conductor? This was explained by Fleming and the rule is known as Fleming's left hand rule. So what this rule is suggesting? That if you stretch your left hand in such a way that your forefinger, middle finger and thumb, they are mutually perpendicular to each other. This one, this one, this one. If this is the situation that the middle finger, the forefinger and the thumb are perpendicular to each other, then the forefinger will show the direction of the magnetic field. The middle finger show the direction of the current and the thumb will show the direction of the motion or the force which is being applied on the conductor. And this rule is also applicable to the electric motors. Like this, you need to engage your learners to explain various concepts. In same way, through different activities, you can give opportunities to explore that how electric motors work, how they convert electric energy to mechanical energy. You can ask your students to explore the possibilities that how they can demonstrate the electromagnetic induction, how it works, what are the examples at their home in their kitchen, how electric generator generates electricity. Many, many concepts are there which you need to explain at secondary level in your class through different activities. Believe me, such concepts you cannot explain theoretically until or unless either you are not involving them in demonstration or in some activity. Without demonstration, without activity, you will not be able to explain these concepts. So I hope that this explanation will help you in understanding the concept of electromagnetism and you will explain it easily to your students. Thank you very much.